I, you mean as far as reading the Bible and then having the visions and right. dreams afterwards? That's right. Uh, no, I uh, basically, I just started having the dreams and visions through the years. I, it not just not a matter of not what I read. In fact, when I came to when I came to Jesus, like I said, I didn't even have the academics and understanding totally of the scriptures. And he started, I started seeing things that people praying. I was praying for people and seeing things happen overseas where people were getting healed and. And the lame were walking, and the blind were receiving the sight, and this type of thing. And I thought, well, that's what Jesus does. He heals people, you know. Yeah. And so yeah. um, I didn't really have a, a, a foundational understanding of the scriptures. And then some of the people in the coffee house started, you know, bringing out the word of God here and there, the little things, and how everybody was going to be gone and beamed out of here and this kind of stuff. And, and you know, just sharing some different things uh, in the scriptures through the, through the earlier years of that. And I, uh, you know, tuned in a little bit. Uh, and so I didn't really... Um, you know, I didn't really have the full understanding of that, and I started having dreams and visions of end times and, 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 and judgments and tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, and these types of things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then started reading. And then I started applying myself to the scriptures deeply okay. into the Word, and I started reading all these things and saying, ah, oh, this is what God does, you know, it's, it's right. in His Word. All right, for those of you just now tuning into the broadcast, you're watching the Edge Television broadcast on our Newsmaker line tonight. We have Matthew Stephen, who's uttered some prophecies that have come true, and quite many of those. And really, in the recent time frame we have now, including uh, so he has some projections into the near future as well. So you stay tuned for that. And uh, this is the Edge broadcast, and uh, we're on every Saturday night, 8 to 10 p.m. live. We also have a Thursday show, and we stream some great, awesome videos through the week on the EdgeAM.com website. Uh, Matthew, uh, you you mentioned earlier as you as sort of an intro, and I, I th we may have touched on this last time, but. It does seem like an oxymoron that you go to a church seeking, and then you read uh, of like a, a biblical text that says, "Come out from among them." I'm, I would think that most religious people would say, when when the text says "come out from among them," they mean come out from say paganism or you know rock worship or, or you know or whatever kind of uh, religion that one would come up with. But you're saying that the that it, it meant more toward coming out of the religious institution itself? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, in that, where it talks about the scriptures coming out from among them, come out from among them and touch no unclean thing. And so, because you come out of the, the system or the apostasies or the institutionalism or the spirit of Babylon itself, if you look at it, you can even look at it, the spirit of Babylon or materialism or paganism or anything, God is speaking to his people in, through all generations to say, touch no unclean thing. And that would have been from the beginning of time of what they told, you know, even from even Moses when he went to the mountain. And these guys go out there, and, and his brother Aaron's hanging out in the camp with all these people, and they're fashioning a golden calf, and they're starting to go into all kinds of lasciviousness and rivalry and this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And as Moses comes off the mountain, obviously the judgment falls, and uh, the people were into idol worship and things. And so even though they were in the midst of each other and what was going on, Moses was separated with God at that point, came back down. Uh, off the mountain and sees this kind of garbage going on in the camp All right. and that's what you know they were into riches give us something to fix our eyes on uh, we want to have a golden calf bring all your gold silver into our ha our storehouse kind of idea and yeah. give it to us and we'll have a big party well you know when I saw this through the church structures in America through this process and the Lord said come out from among them and I started hearing about things that you know and seeing things within the church that I could not find in the scriptures Mm -hmm. And all I saw was it centered around building projects, more staffs, bigger buildings, crystal cathedrals, and everything else. Mm -hmm. Private it, planes. It turned my stomach because I had such a heart to reach out to the poor and the needy and the families that are every day struggling out there. And they're not being touched with the gospel. They weren't being touched with Jesus' love. And I thought to the church, I thought, is this what we do? We come here on Sunday morning. And we hang out. We keep looking at the clock and can't wait till we get to Perkins at 1 o'clock. You know, and I'm not saying that happens in everybody's church building in America. I know there are some uh, people that love the Lord, and there are some true worshipers of Jesus within the church. And and I know there are some people in the churches that are, are reaching out to feed the poor. I know there's some people out there that do have compassion and God's love. But by and large, the infrastructure of the Church of America and its apostate systems, it's all centered inward focus instead of going beyond the four walls and reaching out with the gospel. And when we look at the difference of the gospel... Daniel, when we see what Jesus did and how he reached out and went to them and he set the captives free, he fed the poor, he, he you know, 
prayed for the, the lame, the blind, this and that, and they were healed, uh, the dead were being raised. We see a total different gospel of the kingdom of what Jesus and the disciples did of the early church versus the church in America today. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this question so. here uh, from the Fast Blast. Uh, a viewer wants to know, has anything happened in the past that actually surprised God and he reacted to it, or is everything a part of his original divine plan? Every bit of its origin. God, there's not one thing that gets past God that He knows all things, sees all things. Mm -hmm. He created the heavens and the earth. He created everybody on the earth and all that's in the earth. He created the universe. And so nothing slips past God's eyes for anything. God's arm and His eyes are not short. Uh, you know, and I, I know some people say, well, gosh, how can such and such happen to so and so? Well, how could a God uh, mm -hmm. that is a God of love allow these things to happen? Or how could you know, God let this happen to my brother or sister or that one yeah. or father and mother or things or tragedies. And God's hand is not short. It's all for his divine appointment. And, and we got to understand going back to what we were talking about, Daniel, earlier, and that was the two kingdom clashes. And that we have to understand that in that kingdom clash, that Satan is out to st still kill and destroy the souls of mankind. And that Jesus is out here, that he died, that people may have okay. life and that they may have it more abundantly. All right. You know, and we have sense. this question here. Uh, a listener wants to know, do you have any immediate prophecies for the future of the United States and the world that need immediate attention? Absolutely. We need, there's some good foundations, and if we're ready in that part of the broadcast to really go into some foundations of that, I'd like to cover a little ground in that area. All right. We will be going to break in about 10 minutes, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Well, we can get started on that. Um, <clears throat> Basically, um, and, and people can go to the website, and, and of course I know it's listed on your website, Daniel, as far as the website and everything, and so that's, that's there, and I'm sure a lot of people are aware of the uh, website itself but, and the letters that are on the, on the website. And you have to understand uh, to the listeners out there that, that the foundation of this is like a prophetic journey unfolding. And so if you want to get the whole picture, it, it really, it, it will take you some time, but if you want to get the whole picture, you really need to read the letter number one uh, uh, that was written uh, 1993, November 20th, and uh, and in there it speaks of uh, you know the different things about to the church in America. It addresses the church in America first, and the reason why that letter addresses that, and the second letter addresses to the land of America, is because the Word of God says it in that order that He judges the church first. The judgment begins in the house of God first. And then he begins to judge the nation, and at the same time, it doesn't mean that he's given up on judging the church just because he judges them. He judges the righteous and the wicked according to the scriptures. And so in the foundations of this, I just want to share this about prophecy, is that if you'll begin to read these letters, you'll see these events uh, unfolding like a journey. You'll have a bigger understanding of all how this is being brought together and what is taking place here. And so, but to bring us up to... Uh, a lot more current things, um, and to bring us up to the uh, the stages of stuff. I, I'd like to share something real quick, and it's out of uh, called American. I did a series called American One Hour, and uh, it's part of the book that I'm writing, by the way. And Daniel, I don't know, I didn't get to mention this to you, but I'm writing writing a book. It's not for sale. I don't sell anything. Uh, I don't get paid for what I do here, folks. Um, it's all all volunteer stuff, and it's. Uh, if someone wants to donate something, that's that's up to you. I don't really care. Uh, so I do. What I do is I never sell anything. It's called a, the book is called a Revelation Factor American One Hour, and uh, I'm I'm still working on the book, and it should be released uh, after a while. I don't know exact date of the release date on it, but um, in here the series of of part one, two, three, four is called American One Hour, um, and I, I'll just read this real quick. It says out of the West. Now, okay, and this is this is what the Lord spoke to me here. It was written back on. November 25th of 2007, um, and of course much of this has come out of way back in some of the 80s and 90s of dreams and visions, but out of the West came two earthquakes. One was in Washington State and one was in California. One of the, Cal one, out of, the one out of California will hit very soon, and, um, and so it says here, I, I went to bed and had a dream, and in the dream it, it began to, uh, I, I, the dream went on continually. I was woken up through the whole night.